Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today for this fun painting tutorial. I'm working on a 12 by 16 black primed canvas. I purchased it this way from Michael's Art Store. However, you can just pre-paint any white canvas you have with black paint or black gesso. So it is all dry, of course. And I'm gonna go over uh, what we're painting quickly here. I really wanted to do an aspen tree landscape, keep it really simple, just about light and shadow and beautiful trees. Aspen trees are one of my favorites. I've been doing quite a few lately of bright red maple trees, so I thought I would change it up and offer uh, a few other trees to go along with our fall and autumn uh, playlist. So I've got a number 10 flat brush here that I'm going to be using to start the painting with. And I'm going to be starting the painting in the center here, pulling up uh, soft shades of yellow ochre, uh, warm neon yellow, and some titanium white. So that's going to be our beautiful light source. And then build up some trees that stand out, which I'll be using um, light blue violet and pastel purple or brilliant purple by uh, Liquitex Basics Acrylics. So all these colors are by Liquitex Basics Acrylic, except for my neon, and that is by Holbein. I'll have a link below if you're curious about where you can get those. Um, so the tree trunks will be these colors first for some soft shadows, and then I'll be going over with the white, and then we'll be adding little bits of black for the pattern on the tree trunks. So if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and get started. Be sure to hit that subscribe right now and tap the bell so you get notified each and every time I upload a new video and you don't miss out on any of them. So all I wanna do is just wet my brush a little bit. That's really gonna help blend my paint out easier. And I'm gonna start off with a little bit of my white and I'm just gonna simply go up and down in the center here. Try to make nice, long, sweeping brush strokes. Now, I like working on a black canvas once in a while. It's really, really fun. It creates the most dramatic moods and contrast shadows in paintings. If you've never tried it, you should really give it a try. Okay, I'm going to pull in a little bit more white now and a little bit of my yellow ochre. And I'll start in the center again, because we're working on a black canvas. Everything's gonna dry a little bit darker, so we wanna be more generous with our white. So it may take a little bit of time to build up the light that you wanna achieve. And if you're not sure if you've added enough, you can wait for it to dry and then come back and add more if you need to. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going here, a little bit more yellow ochre, and my white. I'm gonna get a little bit more water on my brush, more white, and this time I'm gonna pull into that warm neon yellow. And I'm gonna start on the outer edges like this. Again, with a little bit of water in my brush, that's gonna help thin the paint out along this left side. We want it to be the brightest in the center and then look a little faded as we get out towards the outer edges of the canvas. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. A little water and warm yellow again. Again, just up and down. I'm going to rinse my brush out. And I'll go back, dry my brush, go back for a little bit more of that white and warm yellow this time. I want this to be our main light source, but I also want it to feel warm. So by adding that warm yellow, we're able to achieve that. So there's different temperatures of colors, right? You can get warm and cool shades. Just 
just going to rinse my brush out slightly, scoop up a little bit of this yellow, a little bit of white on the tip of my brush like this, and I'm just going to start pulling side to side, making it a little bit wider here as we get out towards the bottom of the canvas, and then it's going to feel like uh, the highlight on this roadway, and then right from that bottom, we're going to pull up and then just make a few areas a little bit thicker so it doesn't look like it's all the same. Okay, so now we're ready to start coming in with our trees. And like I mentioned, I'm going to be going into the blue and the purple to start. And I'm just going to start pulling up. all the way off the canvas. I'm not over mixing the two colors. They're going to get a little bit wider as we come out towards this side of the canvas, either side of the canvas. So that's going to help give us that perspective. We want them to come down right to about here. See, these colors are pretty together. And even if you happen to go over some of that yellow and pick that up, that'll look nice as well. I'm going to take, just wash my brush off so I don't have any bits of yellow in there. And I'm going to take those colors again. And I'm just going to start tapping in a little bit here along the sides for some shadows on some leaves and ground coverage. And this way we'll cover the base of the trees too. And then pull in a few shadows here. And I'll add a little bit more over these trees and they can be leaning a little bit if you want. They don't all have to be perfectly straight up and down. Okay, once again with a clean brush, I'm going to take some yellow ochre, warm yellow and some white and I'm going to add another layer and build up this color a little bit more. Add a little bit down here. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is just quickly dry this off and then I'm going to start coming in with white on my tree trunks and then we'll add a little bit of black for the pattern on the trees. So I'm just going to take a uh, filbert brush for this next step because I want it to feel round and really stand out 
so that these tree trunks feel uh, 3D and they do have this rounded um, surface to the, for the bark. So we'll just go right into this and I'm just gonna wet my brush first a little bit and I'm gonna take that white on both sides of my brush, not too heavily. And first I'll just get a few of these back here. And then kind of pull and scoop across, kind of reminds me of um, painting palm trees. And then down. So that's how you're really going to create that um, texture and effect on the tree trunks. See, it's a little bit wet there still, so I'm just going to take a little bit more of my white and add that on there. And then we'll start with this, this one over here. So little scoops across and then down. You can kind of use your brush like a palette knife too. And you'll get that more like a natural shape of the bark and the pattern. It's kind of like that bark that it peels off, right? It's like paper. See how with these marks, we're doing these, applying these little scoops like this. We're already starting to see some shadows in there and building up to that pattern that they have. And then we'll really set it off when we come back in with our black. I wanna mention, I definitely haven't gone um, back for any more uh, water. I think this gives the trees these tree trunks more of a natural uh, look because you can see because my brush is pretty dry now it's leaving these little spots with a purple showing through and then a little bit of that black underneath the base of the canvas and that's really helping to create that pattern already and look at these trees So we'll just keep going down and then across. So you can make your scoops with your brush, full width of your brush, and then you can also turn your brush and just use the very tip for skinnier lines. back over to this one now, see if I can add a little bit more now that it's had a bit of time to dry.
Okay, so don't forget about those areas that you want to have brighter white. It's not going to be the same all the way up and down the full length of a tree trunk. You want to have some spots that are a little bit lighter. And then remember to come in and add those little lines, skinnier lines, fuller ones. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with a little bit of black, wash my brush off, and I'll just start adding these little dabs. Dab, scoop, dab, dab, scoop. So you're constantly changing it up. It helps if your brush kind of splits apart like this. Can go from the edge and scoop in. My advice is just to always change it up. So sometimes from the edge in and then sometimes just across the middle too. No water on my brush. If you want to outline them a little bit, you can. Okay, so I wonder how you guys are doing so far. Hope you're enjoying this and following along. Trees are one of my favorite things to paint. I find them really relaxing and forgiving as well because trees aren't perfect. They can be a little crooked, lopsided, uneven. So just remember, dab, dab, scoop. If you're not sure, helps to say it out loud, dab, dab, scoop. And then let's go over to this side. I'm just going to make my brush kind of spread apart again. I'll start from this side. Dab, dab, scoop. Dab, dab, scoop. I'm going to go in between these ones here with a black. Even though we've got a black canvas, it's different from the Mars black I'm using, and it's going to make these stand out more.
And I'm not going to take black in here though because I like that soft transition with the gold there. And I'm going to come in between here. I'm just going to add a little bit of water to my brush. Help blend that paint out. I'm going to add a little on the side here as well. And then I'll continue along. Dab, dab, scoop. These ones back here a little bit smaller, farther away, so it's getting a little bit more faded back there, so we don't need to add all of that. I'm going to go back for a little bit more white and a little bit of my purple and my blue. And I'm going to come in and add a few scoops, a few more little scoops in here. Just to add a little bit more color. And now with a clean brush, a little bit of tinted white with the warm yellow. We'll come around the center here. Make these trees stand out a little bit more. And then I'm going to take that yellow white again and go up and down a little bit of water if needed. And then just scumble it out at the base and it will kind of create this little bit of misty fog look. And then I'll continue with a little bit more with that warm yellow at the very top of the canvas. It's easier to come in with this smaller brush than with my uh, bigger flat brush that I was using originally. with that yellow or both yellows. Now if you have too much water in your brush and push too hard you might end up taking that paint right off so gentle gentle okay so the next thing we're going to do is come in with some branches 
And I've got a liner brush. This is a long one, but you can use any size that you want or that you have. And I'm just gonna take some white, a little bit of blue and purple, just like this, and just start wiggling out. Make some a little bit thicker. You want to make sure you have enough water on your brush. Now don't stress too much about your branches because we're going to be adding the leaves to them, right? So you can camouflage any ones that you're not really, really happy with. All I'm doing is just twisting. Watch my fingers. I'm doing this while I'm pulling. Twist, wiggle, wiggle, and pull. And then we'll take a little bit of black. And we can go underneath and add a few shadows. Make them look a little more 3D. And then these thicker branches here, we can add little dabs of black that goes along with the pattern on the tree trunk itself. If you want, it's really not necessary though. Take a bit of black and white. That's another way you can approach it, and then you can get shadows and highlights all at once like that. For our tree tops and our leaves, I'm going to be using a one inch oval mop brush, and I'm going to start with my yellow ochre. It's pretty thick. I've got heavy bodied paint I'm using today and you want to just add it to your brush that's dry you don't want to get your brush wet first with any water you just want to approach it into the paint and then you keep this nice poofy shape that's really important for creating that texture and you just want to start tapping like this tap 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 wherever you want those leaves to be. Let's see what I mean. We're going to go over some of those branches to make it look natural. So you really have to do that. And then I'm just going to kind of gently push and wiggle. I'm going to add some down here at the base of the trees. A little bit more for this side. Okay, we're going to go right into that neon yellow. And we're going to start applying that partially over the yellow ochre. Now keep in mind, the neon yellow is going to dry darker unless we add a little bit of white to it. And I'll do that in just a moment. I want to apply this layer first. and some down here at the bottom.
we're matting it over the lighter center here, it's going to dry that nice bright uh, color. But here, we're going to need to add a little bit of white. Um, I'm just going to rinse this brush off and dry this off quickly. And then I'll come in with a smaller brush. I'll be coming in with this filbert brush here. That's a number 16 by Lerman Decor. It's a, a really nice little filbert brush. It's a little on the stipper side. And I'm going to use this to be able to control the amount that I add while still maintaining the texture of the leaves on the, on the branches. So we'll dry it off. I'll come in with this brush, dry white and neon yellow for our final highlight on the trees. Okay, so it's just about all dry now. We've got a few areas where it's a little bit thicker. I'll just be very careful where I go over that. I'm gonna, with a dry filbert brush, again, this is a number 16 filbert. I'm gonna take, just dab in my neon yellow with my titanium white and tap, tap, tap. And this is gonna make our leaves really pop off the canvas. We'll come over on this side, do the same thing, just a little tap. Remember not to over highlight if you happen to, just go back and add a few of the original colors that we started with. Acrylic paint is so forgiving, you know, you can always paint over. The only thing that you might be concerned about is the texture that it leaves there if you're using uh, heavy bodied paint, the way we're using it here. Okay, and I am going to come down here and add a few golden highlights. But mainly just in this area here where we want to focus on that light. See, I added a little bit too much white there, so I'm just going to balance that with uh, some more of the yellow. And then work this out of my brush a little bit, wiggle, wiggle, get my brush nice and flat, and I can use it for more of a highlight on the road there. A little bit of yellow ochre now and with my warm yellow and I'll just come around tap in a little more stretch this out okay I'm gonna add just one last shadow my brush is clean I'm gonna take a little bit of black just kind of water it down not dripping and take a little bit of the blue and purple with it make somewhat of a gray color here and I'm just going to go along the edge and create more of a shadow so just like one quarter of the way in from the left black. 
I'm just going to soften this little line right here. Soften right in here. And then take a little scoop of each blue and purple. And I'm going to dab, 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 dab for a little bit more beautiful shadows on these leaves here on the side. A little bit more black right in between. I'll just put a little bit right in there. Maybe just a little bit. And with that, I'm going to call this painting all done. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned a lot and got inspired. Don't forget to check out the links below where you can join Patreon and get uh, exclusive content videos on there, one-on-one -on -one advice from me, and there's lots of perks, too many to mention here. Also subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll see you all soon in another video. Take care, everybody, and happy painting. Bye!